Good day to you. We have been reading in the book of Exodus now. We have read uh, the last time, Exodus chapter 18, where Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, came and brought his wife and his sons and visited and shared some insight with Moses to help him build a better, we'll call it a better judicial system so that Moses would not have to hear every single case of, uh, uh, of conflict between the people. Uh, let me just read the last couple of verses here. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he had said. Moses chose capable men from all Israel, and he made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. They judged the people under normal circumstances. The difficult cases they would bring to Moses, but every small case they would judge themselves. Then Moses sent his father-in-law on his way, and so Jethro went to his own land. Now that's the end of Exodus chapter 18, which was really all about the way Moses was trying to hear all the cases, all the conflict, and, and resolve all, the dis, all these disputes. I believe that God sent Jethro to try to simplify this and make this a little easier for Moses, because it was just too much and it was too time-consuming for him to hear every little case. Now we're ready to read Exodus chapter 19. I am reading... In the Amplified Bible, and this is Exodus chapter 19. In the third month after the children of Israel had left the land of Egypt, the very same day they came into the wilderness of Sinai, when they moved out from Rephidim, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and they camped there. Israel camped at the base of the mountain of Sinai. Moses went up to God on the mountain. And the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Say this to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will in fact obey my voice and keep my covenant agreement, then you shall be my own special possession and treasure from among all peoples of the world. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation set apart for my purpose. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. I want to pause there for a moment, and I want to refer us back to, I don't remember the exact verse, but back over to uh, Peter's epistles. He mentions also that we are a special people, a special priesthood. And I think that comes partly from this, in that this is God's covenant. As this is God's covenant with Israel, so is this. We are a part of this covenant. We have been grafted in as uh, Gentiles. And so that now this covenant, this part of the covenant applies to us. So we, as the children of God, are also a kingdom of priests and a holy nation set apart for God's purpose. And and Peter does mention this, and I, I don't remember the exact verse and, uh, and place, but you can find this uh, in Peter's epistles, one of them, where it will say, he says something very similar that we are a special royal priesthood for God. So I think that's interesting, but it's something that shows how we've been grafted in and now how a lot of these things, when we look in the Old Testament, we want to say, well, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Covenant with the Israelites. It doesn't apply to us. But all of this rolls forward. The Lord Jesus, he completed this covenant, but he didn't do away with that covenant. We are still we are still to be the embodiment of. Of, of the covenant with God. And this covenant, while the covenant has changed somewhat in that we have a better, freer covenant, 
a lot of this, the, the heart of the law has not changed. The heart and the spirit of things and the way we are to be and the way we are considered by God has not changed. We are still his children, his priests in this world. We are the ones who have to follow God's will and be a holy nation for him, meaning that we are setting ourselves apart from the rest of the world. Um, but we are in the world and we're trying to really reach the world with the message of God and his gospel. All right, I'm going to continue on. So Moses called for the elders of the people and told them all these words which the Lord commanded him. All the people answered together and said, We will do everything that the Lord has spoken. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud so that the people may hear when I speak with you and may believe and trust in you forever. Then Moses repeated the words of the people to the Lord. Now, I want to pause here for just a moment and, and re recognize that Moses is still reporting to the Lord what the people have said. Now, we know that the Lord knows what the people have said, but much like he wants us to pray and have that conversation, conversation and relationship with him, that's what he's trying to establish here with them, a, a conversation and a relationship with them so that so that he's not so distant, not so far away. So he's bringing himself closer in a thick cloud so the people can hear when he speaks with Moses. You know, he's trying to be closer with them and closer to them in a very reassuring and uh, faith building way. Because he says, here, I'll speak with you and may believe and trust in you forever. He's trying to help build their faith and build their trust. To, to them, here they're out in the wilderness and, and they're in a, a new kind of scary uh, life for them. Everything has changed. We, we Sometimes we make fun of them. We, we give the Israelites a hard time. But everything has changed over the past, what, third Third month after they left it, Egypt. So here we are three months later. Their whole world, their lives have totally changed, completely different. And, you know, they need this reassurance. They need this, this faith building from God. And that's what God is trying to do. He's trying to give them that faith. So moving on, the Lord also said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. That is, prepare them for my sacred purpose and have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in that thick cloud in the sight of all the people. You shall set barriers for the people all around the mountain, saying, beware that you do not go up on the mountain or touch its border. Whoever touches the mountain must be put to death. No hand shall touch him, that is, no one shall try to save the guilty party, but the offender must be stoned or shot through with arrows. Whether man or animal that touches the mountain, he shall not live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come up to the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified them for God's sacred purpose and they washed their clothes. He said to them, Be prepared for the third day. Do not be intimate with a woman. So here they had to really set themselves apart. They had to get clean, as clean as you could be, you know, in the wilderness and wash your clothes and do all those things so that they would be prepared. So it happened on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and flashes of lightning and a thick cloud was on the mountain, and a very loud blast was sounded on a ram's horn, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood and presented themselves at the foot of the mountain. So here, I mean, this is something. They're all coming out to stand at the foot of the mountain and present themselves to God. 
Now, this this may be partly where we get the idea, you know, the idea of this is holy ground. We're coming to meet God. We're coming to worship God. This could be the idea where we get kind of the idea of where we, you know, we kind of get all cleaned and gussied up, as they used to say for church. You know, we would get all, you know, we would want to be clean and we would want to be uh, looking our best to go and worship God because we felt like that's when we were going to meet and be with God. Of course, we when we do that, there's nothing wrong with that. That is a good thing that we do that. But we're kind of missing the point if we if we don't stop and think about that for a minute. God is not at the church building. I just just want to make this clear. God is always he is always with us wherever we are. So God is always there with us. He sees and knows everything. And he's he's always there. He's with us and he's for us at all times. It's fine and it's good that we do get cleaned up and, and, and dress nice and go to church looking looking good. I don't think you have to be extravagant or extraordinary or do anything really extreme, but just look nice and clean and presentable so that you can be among the congregation and you know not be smelly or anything like that. And then you can worship God together and it just makes it all a much nicer and very special thing. But just be aware and just remember that God is not in the church building. God is in you and with you wherever you are. Just want to mention that. But but this idea may be where we get the idea. You know, some of the old is, Israeli practices may be where we get the idea of like, well, we want to be cleaned up. We want to be nice and presentable for church. When I was a kid, I wondered about that. I didn't understand. Mount Sinai was wrapped in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. And it happened as the blast of the ram's horn grew louder and louder. Moses spoke, and God answered him with a voice of thunder. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain. And the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and he went up. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, Go down, warn the people so that they do not break through the barriers around the mountain to the Lord to see me, and many of them perish as a result. Also have the priests who approach the Lord consecrate, sanctify, set apart themselves for my sacred purpose or else the Lord will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. Moses said to the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai because you warned us, saying, Set barriers around the mountain and consecrate it. Then the Lord said to him, Go down and come up again, you and Aaron with you, but do not let the priests and the people break through the barriers to come up to the Lord, or he will break forth in judgment against them and destroy them. So Moses went down to the people and told them again about God's warning. So here, God is saying, let's just, you know, let's make sure, let's be absolutely clear. Let's go down and tell everybody again. He's warning them. He doesn't want them basically to get themselves killed. So God is telling them, look, telling Moses, look, just go down and tell them again, make sure and Moses is like, well, yeah, but we already did that. Now, that's me. That's, I'm, always, I'm always that way. I'm like, yeah, but I've already done that. But here, Moses, God is telling Moses, look, just go down and do it again. Just be safe. Let's make sure. He doesn't want to have anyone be killed or be destroyed. And this is another, to me, this is another sign of his concern for them and thus his concern for us that he didn't want them to be killed or destroyed. He wanted them to have a chance. And so he sends Moses down to tell them again, don't do this. You know, make sure you stay behind the barriers, stay safe. Definitely a safety thing in my opinion. And I'm, I'm a big believer in safety. So, all right. So that is Exodus chapter 19. And I think it shows some interesting things in This is a new relationship for the Israelites with God through Moses. And this is a whole new 
adventure in life for them. This is their life is totally changed and totally different. So I know a lot of times we give them a hard time and we say, wow, well, how could they be that way? We would we wouldn't do that. Oh, yeah, we probably would. Really, we're we're still people. (laughs) So we would probably do the same things. But nonetheless, that is Exodus chapter 19. I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.